Hello there, this is Zoltan speaking with another Archon XP webinar. What do we do today? Well, today we get comfortable because we are going to talk about upholstered furniture and see how it's all done. Let's take a look. As always, I'm joined by my colleague, Mr. Idesh Pop, our resident architect. Hi there. Now, this is not our first uh, broadcast on furniture design. We did a couple of them before, but those were mainly restricted to um, sort of so-called carcass furniture pieces, yeah, yeah. Uh, cabinetry and simple elements. But what happens if you have something more intricate? Uh, every time you do a 3D design, you know that the, the amount of uh, surfaces you have, the amount of materials you have make the, uh, the 3D model even more complicated. Yeah, the more it gets organic, it's That's right. more, more complicated. So we always tell <coughs> that when it comes to organic shapes, we have designated tool for that, which we are going to talk about later. And today is the day when we talk about those. <coughs> so let's see what you have for us today. Well, uh, today we uh, first uh, try to cover the basics of how you can uh, create a furniture piece like this. Mm -hmm. uh, there are a few easy steps uh, to break this down, but uh, most likely, what we need to cover is the uh, so-called uh, parts that uh, builds up a, a thing like this. How to create those parts, how to create a seater, how to create a leg or a back, back mm -hmm. rest or something like that. And then how to combine it into a one, one furniture. Then I will uh, show you another example. This, is, this, is, this will be the second example. Then using the basic knowledge. We will much better understand how to build up something even more complex like this. How is this going to be different <coughs> from the tools that we have created before? Well, one of the, uh, you mean the carcass uh, furniture? Yes, that's, that's what I mean. Well, the, in case of the carcass furniture, those are kind of parametric uh, items where you kind of design the parameters that builds up the furniture. Mm -hmm. Here it is partially true, but mostly you will c combine uh, a set that you just create uh, one by one with several different uh, items and then combine them together. So instead of using one single tool to build everything inside uh, within, you will be able to combine downloaded objects as part of this, uh, this uh, piece mm -hmm. of furniture. You will be able to, to design the, the backrest. Uh, you will be able to uh, understand how to uh, break down Yes. Uh, larger and more complicated uh, things into smaller parts and then create something complex like this. I will show you um, a first, first a very simple example, mm -hmm. then this one, then a three-seater sofa, and uh, finally I will show you other ideas how you could use these items to create even more uh, items, um, Perfect. furniture pieces. So what are the first <coughs> steps? What do we do first? Well, for the first, <coughs> I think I will uh, open a, um, an empty new project, so we will learn about the basics uh, that will uh, help us understanding the the architecture of uh, yeah the mechanics like behind it. Yeah, so let's just create a new project, <coughs> and in this new project, I will simply yeah, just close this down because now this is not a not not, not the beam part is the most important. So I just uh, start using the interior uh, and there is this smart objects <laughs> um, thing now the first thing that you will need is to be able to create you know the parts that build up a, a furniture like that the first furniture let me open up this uh, I guess this is on the other side it's here so uh, let me let me show you an image first let me just import this one I won't use the image this time just for reference so that's what it's going to look <coughs> like and this is something that I'm about to model now mm -hmm. so it's a nice footrest that's if right. I look on an, on, a, on an item like this uh, even in real life there is a, a bar stool here and and another chair and, and things like that I will be able to uh, break it down to furniture parts and for example this top rest I mean the seater itself the seat itself the 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 bottom plate, the legs, um, and if I know um, smaller units, and if I understand how I can model them, I can build up something mm -hmm. even more complex. So basically, so we have to build, <coughs> break it down in, in, in our heads to smaller segments, and then we proceed with the smaller parts, and then we put that, them all together. Yeah, so uh, what I will start with now, I will just keep it, uh, and let me dim it a little bit, so it, it will be more uh, easy to understand. This, this is actually just an, an image, so I just, Dial this down, mm -hmm. so it's uh, we can still see, but it's not so um, strong. So um, what we can see here, and I will start with this: the leg. 
This seems an easy easy part to yes. start because we already know there is a tool in Archline which is able to create something that is changing its cross section uh, when it's going through a path, and mm -hmm. that's the that's a loft tool. Yes, the a loft, loft is able to to drag something along a path with a changing cross section. Now yeah. you could have as many cross section profiles in its path as you want, <coughs> but if you have two one on the beginning and, and another one at the end, then it's going to give you a nice, nice morph between the two points. Yeah, the difference between the, the sweep and the loft is just as you described. The, the, the sweep will uh, sweep one cross-section uh, along a path, path, in a longer path and, the, and the loft can change the cross-section. So let's mm -hmm. see how this turns into a changing with a uh, lag like that. And it's, it's even symmetrical, so how to do mm -hmm. that. Now let's see how this builds up. I can see that there is a vertical path. I can des design a different path, but now I'm fine with the vertical path. What I need to change is that I have just so much cheat sheet here for yes, me. Yes, yes, for the already dimensions. I measured the values of this thing, how to build it up. So th this should be, uh, now we are working in millimeters, so this should be uh, 140 millimeter in length. So this will be the length of this, from this point to this point of this flag. Now to create the proper, either the beginning or the top cross section, I need to go to the cross section, select the cross section. I'm, I'm happy with this uh, lag, I mean this rectangular cross section, but I can select another one. And then I can change its weight and height. And let's start with the with this, uh, thinner one, I mean the bottom bottom one. That's, that's around, I believe this was 30 by 30. So the, the, the moment I'm changing it, I, I'm actually, uh, changing the existing one, the, the red one. Yes. And if I would like to change it at the top instead of the bottom, I need to add this same cross section mm -hmm. once again. Now I can define where it is. It's still Along not existing. Path. I do whatever I want with this. I can change its cross section size and see it's not changing anything because this is not existing mm -hmm. yet. It's, it's not laid down yet. Yes, it's that's right. I need to create it and the, the, the moment I'm creating it, it will change the, the, the thickness of this uh, unit. Now, what I'm about to do is to change the cross section at the top, so I need to position it to the top level, this way. And as you can see, you can use the this uh, percentage value, or you can just say, well, it's actually zero from the top, so because it's, it's at the exactly top. on the top. Yeah, something like that. And then, then now when I say, okay, let's do it, create, then now I have something like this. But the issue uh, with this... Yeah, one, one thing is still not correct. If we see the, the picture, we see that it's a sort of a slanted item. Yeah. So it's asymmetrical. And this mm -hmm. is now it's completely symmetrical from any uh, angle we see it. And how to change that. Now, as you can see, there is this path and there is the cross section and another cross section. And both cross sections are aligned with this path with their center point. And that's why when you change the, the, the thickness of this whole thing, it's, it's, it's uh, symmetrically changing. So to be able to do something like, like this here, I need to first, for example, select the side, like this and this. This should be following the vertical path and the rest is just creating itself. Mm -hmm. So let's do that. For this, I need to edit the, the, the profile properties. I'm not about to select another pro, uh, cross section. I'm just simply, visualizing the, the cross section and changing its you know reference point to for example this point and when I say okay so it's already moved to that oh that so you location. have to do it if, for the the one on I the top would like to go in a different way so actually this is how it was in the in the dialogue so see now it's it's a line this is what I did if I go back here and say okay it's jumping back to the center mm -hmm. and now if I do this, is jumping to the left bottom corner. You can choose whichever point you want for your purposes. But to be able to create something like this, I need to do the same thing, exactly the same thing at the bottom um, cross section. And for that, I can click here or I can navigate through these two oh, yes. uh, you know, cross sections. So this works just as well as this single click here. So if I click here and I do the same thing and I select the same left bottom, bottom uh, cross section reference point, like this and now I have what I wanted and this is the lag mm -hmm. as it looks like over there so this is it perfect so that's 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 the <coughs> way to create something like that obviously it could have like even a rotational uh, form we have discussed this before during yeah. our 3d uh, design uh, elements uh, <coughs> webinar yeah but let's just go with the simple one how do you make four of these um, well 
Actually, I can use this same thing. I don't have to create another one slanted the other way, the other way, the other way. I can use this single one simply by rotating it around mm -hmm. just as the makers do uh, in, the, in the factory. So I, th the only thing that I need to do to be able to assemble this later as, an, as, a, as a unit is to somehow save it so I will have this uh, object later. I, I actually already saved it. This is, this is the one in a different color. This way, if you click on save, you can you know just simply name it and yes. so on. Take care when you when you edit something that was already existing. Always use if there is a save and there is a save as and if you would like to create a new copy of that thing, you don't do you do not want to overwrite the original one. Then choose save as and in that case you will have an additional mm -hmm. copy of that thing. Still, even if you have something cr created previously and you don't like the material, you always have the option to go back and change the color, change the material, select another wood, for example, now a wooden patter pattern, and say, well, I'm more happy with another color, like for example, something else. this one here. And then, then I can use that. But the point here is that if I don't save it as it is now, I will only have this copy mm -hmm. uh, readily available. Yes. So now what I do, I just save it as Meralda Lag. Uh, that's the know. name of the uh, food trust. Right, yeah, that's the, that's the name of this unit. So let's just, and it's, and it's going to accessories and legs. I, I can still do the same thing just as before with all the rest of the items that I create in Archline. So I can say even, even bin parameters I can add. And I can say, okay, this is the one that I'm about to use for in the future. And now I'm done with the, with the leg. I can actually create a copy of this here right on the drawing and then I can, you know, just go around and place more and more legs. But this is something that is kind of manual and I don't want to do that because later I would like to be able to move this whole thing as one single unit. Now, if I would like to move this and the seat and the, and the whole thing, I'd always n have to, you know, select them together. And this is not, yes. not something what I want. But just to make sure I actually leave it here as it is and then I will show you the difference, mm -hmm. what's the difference between here and, okay. and the other one. Okay, so let's use the smart objects part, uh, object parts. What's the next uh, <coughs> thing that you want to create? Because, yeah, uh, because the, the, the following two parts building up this unit is the seat itself and the kind of the, 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 the heart plate here. And that there's the heart mm -hmm. plate and the, and the kind of uh, pillow or something yes, like yes. that. So this is something that you can create with, this, with the smart objects part. Um, how that works uh, first things first you need to decide either you create something vertical or horizontal and then based on that main orientation you can start going with so for example if this is a this is a seat uh, of a um, of a chair if is this if this is a plate or, or kind of like a soft part of the uh, mm -hmm. the mattress of the of the bed this you will start with this but if is if this is a backrest if this is like the side arm or something like that, you will use the vertical uh, option. So you look at the furniture and you can decide which you which. You so which will which item would be better to model that? That takes some practice, but now <coughs> we are showing you all the tools that are available, so that you can that way you can decide. <coughs> yeah. So and after uh, you have to select and set the size of this uh, this whole thing. The, the width is actually there's a it's called profile width. Why is that? Because actually the software is building up this unit based on one two and three profiles. You can see them highlighted in red. And let's, let's just quickly go through these and then to better understand what happens. There is this, let's, let's start with this one because now this is the mo most uh, definitive. If I select another cross section if, or if I ah. design new, new yes. cross section, this is how the object basically will look like. I can go with this or this. I, I think this time I will go with this uh, frontal profile so, uh, O1 because this is just a simple uh, rectangle. And by the way, it's called frontal profile because uh, many times you will use it vertically and in that case it's frontal yes. profile, but it's a, it's, a, it's a horizontal profile now. So from wherever you choose your profile or you design your profile, just as you designed your guitar uh, <laughs> earlier, yes. you can, <coughs> you, can you know, select this and say, okay, this is the basic shape and then this basic shape will be or not distorted with from this direction mm -hmm. and Maybe from the other direction by some curvature or <coughs> something like yes. that. Yes. So, for example, if I select a curve by that ah, direction, it's changed, and it, this is not changing. But I can still distort this whole thing around another cross section. And in that case, you will end up with something very, very um, kind of naturalistic, curvy uh, surface. So 
all you need to do is just to look at that part that you're actually mm -hmm. modeling, perhaps the curvy uh, backplate of the uh, bar stool or anything around you and, and try to describe it with three different shapes. The main shape and uh, one curve and the, and the vertical, I mean uh, perpendicular curve, if there is any. And then you will be able to describe mm -hmm. a, a even a very complex object like this. And so let's just go back. I think now I will be happy with the simple profile, but later I will use this uh, for other purposes. So I, this is something okay, this is also okay, and this is a um, simple profile again. So I'm going back to the first page, and then I just told that I should set up the basic size, and this should be 600 by, um, I think this is 450. Uh, and the rest is just uh, 100 millimeters. And then I need to, uh, I can also make it a little bit more, this, this is just a piece of brick uh, if, if you look at it, but if I would like to round it off just as this original unit is, then I can decide the side of side rounding, uh, you know. Radius. Radius, yeah, uh, thank you for that. So it's just, uh, it will be 10 millimeters now. So it's, it's ah, nice see, so and round. It breaks off the edges. Yeah, and whatever shape I use, it, it, it does the same. Uh, the surface resolution is not important now, but if this will be something curvy and you see uh, the, the surface breaking up, then you can make it more uh, more high detailed. Uh, but now I'm At this point, it's not needed. What yeah. about the uh, materials? <laughs> would that be applied here or? Here, you can decide the material. Uh, you can either go with the same material everywhere. See, there's the, this all option. If I disable, I can uh, change the side, the, the, the bottom and the top. Now, mm -hmm. I just would like to clear, clear it up with, with one single set step. So I just go to the textile library and I think I will go with this one. I like that. Uh, I like this. Later, perhaps I, I think will change this it, would, but this for, this now it, it, for, for now it's good. Do you have to save this as well? Yeah, I, uh, I definitely should. Just as there are already some things that I will talk about these later. So I will just save it as uh, one uh, single um, item. Mm -hmm. And then I just use the save as and say this is the hard plate or something like that. And uh, I think let's just use it in the same name. Yeah, so that way it can find Esmeralda it. the hard plate. And this goes to, well, I just save it into accessories now, or I will, uh, no, I, I'm using the my library, and then I just use the uh, Esmeralda sub library, sub subcategory, and then I just leave it, leave the rest, and then I'm saving it, so I will be able to easily uh, find it. So let's do the, the, the other object. Now imagine we go through the whole thing again, because we placed it and, um, this is how it looks like, and we start it over again, and we just would like to create this one. So to, so to clear it up and, and make it even more simple, I just move a copy of this. I, I just don't want to start from Yes, from, you, from can, you can use scratch. it as a starting Because point. the only difference is the height, the material is the same, the height is different, and there is some sort of... Extrusion on it. Extrusion, so kind of, you know, like it's a like blow up or, or mm -hmm. something like that. So uh, there is only two differences. So I just use this as a prototype. I go to the details and see what changes. For example, the thickness changes. And, uh, <coughs> and, the, and the rest I, I did not talk about is Would this. Would you make that this. with another profile or? Well, if I make it with another profile, then I cannot make it kind of um, blow up here and at the same time here because the curve oh, is yes. only on one side. Yes. So if I would like to do that, there are these things called uh, effects. As you can see, there are several effects that you can apply on one or the other side. This is the top and the bottom side. So what happens if I select the pillow effect? And I say, okay, let's just affect the full area, the full surface here. And I think the padding depth is, let me just use my cheat sheet here. It's <coughs> it should be a little bit larger. And then let's just add it here. See, it's, I see. It's, it's blowing it up. And then I can do the same thing at the bottom here. <coughs> And let's just do the same thing. Well, it's just 10. It's not enough. Yes, that's so Let's just change it furthermore. And then this is what I get. And mm -hmm. then now I can combine this with the other one and with the legs and build up the furniture. Just, I should not forget to save it. I do yes. not want to overwrite this, so I just save it as a new one. And this should be the Esmeralda pillow. So to, <coughs> to recap, the way it works is that you have to design a basic element and then you are just going to add the effect. 
Yes. To make yes. it make it puffed, and eventually you combine all the elements together. How does that work? Well, if you would like to co uh, combine these things, uh, let me just save it. So this will be the Esmeralda pillow. I have Esmeralda legs. I have Esmeralda heart plate, and let's combine these together. So these are the units building of this whole thing now. And if I use the smart objects and the assembled object, mm -hmm. <coughs> I can assemble an object. I see. Based so on you, the you just pick the parts, uh, pick the parts, <coughs> and it it, uh, it puts it together. Yeah. Well, you can start with the legs. You can start with the heart plate. You can start with any of these. Mm -hmm. And uh, in reference to that originally selected item, you will be able to place the rest. So I'm starting with the heart plate because it's it's a good origin for this object. Uh, it's easy to find myself around. So let's just go. And there was there was this uh, Esmeralda thing. And that, that here, this is something we call it the Fabrids bar. Now it's not containing something that I saved recently because I did not use it yet. So I need to go to the library and try to find where my thing is. And let's just uh, yeah, search is. for this one. And I, I, I told I will start with the hard plate. So I just select this one. And then now, now I have this here. It's red because it's not added yet. It's not created. I can, I can make changes. Now, these are not making any sense now. But once I do it and I create it, the second thing that I will add, perhaps the pillow or the legs, uh, will have a different position, a different position, and then I can play play around with that. So let's see what happens with the legs. Now I just add a new one. Okay, let's just create a new one. And this new thing won't be the same object. It will be something else, but not not these. Uh, mm -hmm. ex it's the leg. <coughs> it's this one because I wanted a nice bright leg. And see it's there, but but it's not a correct position. If you start figuring it out, you will sooner or later find that you can make changes with these arrows. You can you can shift it, but first the first things first. The problem is with the is the it's the it's the positioning plate. It's at the top. It should mm -hmm. be at the bottom. And you can realize that there are kind of rotation <coughs> uh, markers with which you can to, you know, select move the surface from another from the top to the side and to the bottom using these. So this way you can go around and find uh -huh. the best place. I see. And then it's what? originally centered, but well now you have a few options. See, now this corner with this point should come here. And then, well, I can see that it should be changed along the red and the green axis. So I can change them here, but uh, sometimes it's just, you know, kind of tedious to find the proper value. Yes. And it's much better to you know just simply click on this this red arrow and move it graphically, mm -hmm. and then perhaps fine tune it because yes, I don't like yes, this yes. value. Let's just go with around minus two hundred and sixty or something. You can round it off then, but it's easier to find this way. And then let's just place it over here. I think I like that position, and then I can ju just okay. do the same. I, I like nice round values, yes. so I just change it the, this, the other way around. So so you would just repeat <coughs> the whole the, the same steps for all these things, yeah. and eventually you walk away with one full uh, object, right? Yeah, and don't forget that the object is created only when you click on this one. Yes. Otherwise, yes. What, still when it's red, it's not not created. And always you place the following item in reference to the selected one. So now. The following item, if I just add the new one, it's in reference ah, to this previous one. Really so me. instead of this as a reference, I should select this as a reference. And now it's it's a quite different topic. Ah, I see. And, and now I can go around. And, well, this is not the top. This should be the bottom and so on. So, so you can go around. Mm -hmm. Let me just cancel this because there is one another thing that I would like to place in reference to this uh, back plate. That this, is this the, the pillow plate, part. And that's the pillow. And there is one, one single thing that I'm about to show you with that. And that's uh, that's uh, how to how to use that. Now, if I if I selected this, and if I now I now I could find the pillow, and I click on the pillow, I would change this single item. And so take care of it that you don't want that. You would like to keep this and add the new one. Okay, this I is important. So add the new one. <coughs> this new one is the pillow, and it's called Esmeralda. <coughs> Esmeralda. It's an extra. Yeah. yeah, and it's this one. <coughs> yeah. So now it's. <coughs> I mean, horizontally and vertically. You uh, just have this to way, it's, it's put cool. it, push it yeah, downwards. Yeah, the, 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 this one, the, the, the vertical uh, direction is not correct, so you can push it back. And actually, the, if they are overlapping, it's not that much of a big thing. 
it's 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 okay. But I could create another version of this pillow when the when the when, when the, the bottom, bottom is, you know, is, flat. is flat. That's right. <coughs> but but just, for this, it doesn't like matter. This fact that I get this way. That's right. So what happens so after that? You created the whole thing. You saved it as, a, as an object. Yeah. Even within the, Archline. Yeah. At, at the end, at the end, I will just simply go there and save this whole unit as a unit. Mm -hmm. Now I won't save it with with this one single yeah, line, but you can imagine how this over. works. And then now I would like to show you how to build up something like what we have start with, started with, with, mm -hmm. with something that is a little bit more complex. Just, just one question, because I'm pretty sure it's, it's going <laughs> to be asked. Uh, yeah. Yes, be, be before that, uh, this is my, my personal one. Uh, what happens if you have mm -hmm. an existing object from another library? You can use that in the assembly yeah. as well, right? So if yeah. you have a furniture leg then download it from the 3D warehouse, for instance, you can use it here too. Yeah, it's important. You don't have to model everything piece by piece. If and we suggest that if you can find it, then don't yeah. waste your for time example, uh, like the classic Chesterfield armrest, if you can find it in a, in a furniture, just you know break it, rip down, it off, save and it, and then you just you know snap it to the side of your furniture. That's right. This way you can you can do that. I see. I see. There was a question. On a, uh, is there a way to <coughs> write protect models in the library so no one can accidentally save over a model? Meaning that if, for instance, <laughs> if I want to save this, I don't accidentally overwrite something that you already have here. Well, if we use the same identical uh, Archline uh, license in the same computer, and I'm going to going off uh, the office, and you come here and you want to overwrite it, we cannot protect it. It's just you know you can do that. Yes. Um, but if this is uh, created separately, even if it's with the same name. The software will understand that they are two different objects. It will be a little bit difficult because you will see two objects with, with the same name. But uh, if they are coming from different sources, then the software won't mm -hmm. you know, uh, mix them. There are a few really issues, useful. few, few uh, um, scenarios when it could happen, but mainly the software is protecting your project uh, by you know, not all writing si things simply by their names. Because in this case, if I create something named table, and then I download something or I just load your project and you obviously will have something called table, yes. I would lose uh, the, the whole thing. That's and right. the same thing happens around with the profiles and the, and the models and, and things like that. Everything that is created is uh, identified individually, but not, not by their mm -hmm. names. Uh, by from the side of the software. I hope this is an answer. I hope to that, that was that was an answer to the question. <coughs> How is the other scenario is going to uh, going to be different from what we have <coughs> just discussed? So let's load up the other project that we opened the discussion with, and let's see how we are going to do things differently this time. Okay, so now we are talking about the same tools, uh, same idea behind, and I'm about to show you how to create a furniture based on a photograph. Mm -hmm. I mean an ups, upholters, upholstered furniture because yes. we already covered this topic from different point of views. But now we are talking about upholstered uh, furniture. Let's see what we have started with and how we could create something like this. Now, as you can see, I have this folder with the images and this image library contains a few images of this thing. It was perhaps part of a catalog or something like that. The point is that it contains nice uh, views of this uh, object from the back. From uh, it's kind of a, just an overview. I really I can't really necessarily use this, but maybe perhaps for the legs. And there's a nice front of view. So for my purposes, it's the best if I have side views and front views that which are uh, nicely and clearly uh, showing their their original shapes. I, I would be happy with the top view as well. Yes. And if this is something that I can, I would like to model based on, on, a, on an original photograph that I, I took on the spot. This is how I should make my photographs to, to, to take as many shots as I can, but uh, most importantly from side, from the other side, and if I can, from the top, if That's it's right. not too large. Uh, actually, what happens <laughs> here, we already discussed during the uh, two parts of the two-dimensional uh, design tools in Archline webinars. We actually mm -hmm. talked about how to import a photograph, scale it, calibrate it, and then redraw it to turn it into a line drawing. Yeah, just to kind, kind of quickly recap how this works and the, and the reason to 
uh, you know, calibrating is that when I place the the image, I can define only the image size, not the mm -hmm. content size. Yes. And if I don't do that, it, I just land with a smaller, large image. And to be able to use this for my pers my purposes, if this is, this is a catalog image, I can see the, in the catalog the, the size of this furniture. If I if I if it was a survey, I, I have to measure it to be able to create something. And this is what I measured on the spot. It was uh, 1,170 millimeters tall. And then this is an important information. When I use this uh, calibrate uh, tool, when I pick the, the bottom most and the top most point of this whole thing, I can say that, okay, this is uh, 1,170. 1, I'm in meters now, but yeah, 1.17. And, and then it's calibrated. So this is how we got to this part. Let's just erase that. And <coughs> then after that, you use the two-dimensional sketching tool yeah. to, to sort of uh, hi highlight the, the outlines of this drawing. Now here, there is one interesting uh, and I think very useful uh, advice that I can mm -hmm. uh, give. The point here is that now I'm about to you know, sketch or draft an item that is completely symmetrical. So to reduce issues, errors that I might put by myself simply by not being accurate enough on tracing an, uh, an image, it's enough to, you know, model, I, I mean, trace only one half of this symmetrical item and then mm -hmm. mirror it using the mirror tool. So however I, I do it, I just, you know, just quickly recap the whole thing. It's just, I would use either the polyline or the spline tool. Perhaps here the polyline is much better because the polyline is a series of, you know, lines and, and smooth arcs that I can just use to quickly uh, follow yes. the contour. And then uh, when I'm done, I just quickly, um, you know, symmetrically uh, mirror, the whole mirror thing. it to the That's other right. side. So this is how I got to this part. And now when I have this part, I can uh, further break it down because on the original photograph, I saw that there is a part which is using this size and there is another part which is very similar, but, but uh, skipping the rest of the bottom part. And then the same way, I just kept um, the the, the top view seat. of, the, of yes. the seat itself. And there is an interesting part here. Actually, that there the are backrest? two things. The backrest, that's the curve of the backrest, which was visible from the other side. And that's the curve uh, of the leg itself. And this, this is, these are the things that are necessary for, uh, for me to be able to build up something like this. So let's go here and find figure it out how this was built. <coughs> if I open it now, you can already see that I assembled this object already in the smart object assembly, it's just the same way. So I modeled the backrest, I modeled the seat, I modeled the um, legs. Now let's start with the seat because in this manner, this is the simplest. So this, this pillow is actually something that if I go to modify, it's, it was created with the small, uh, smart object part. It is having this specific size, it is having some nice rounding off around the edges, it has a vertical, straight line from the front view. It has a vertical straight line from the side view. It's not curvy. I could make it, but I didn't because it's not, not like that. And it has a specific top view, which is a custom profile. A custom, if I, if I see it's a custom profile, it's something that I didn't save. I just used the, yes. uh, you know, this one here and I just, I just And then we just picked up that. With the close loop and let's use this and this is how I did it. So, so this, this is yes. how you can get uh, something like this. This is why it's wise to track things around. And uh, then you, I guess, you added, added the rounding of the edges, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that then I, add, I uh, changed this value here, this uh, rounding. So uh, what I have uh, here then is, of course, the material. This is a cream material, but I can change it to something else and so on. And then I have one single effect, and it's the pillow effect to, you know, blow it up a little yes. bit more on this side. It but there is nothing. Added on the other side. The other side is completely flat, just as I mentioned before. Mm -hmm. uh, there are general settings I did not cover that, but of course, if you use it as an individual object, you can say the relative elevation, just as with other objects. But now this will be part of a larger thing, so it's not that much important. And then, uh, I, you know, I just saved it as a, as a pillow object. So this is how I got to this part. Let's see how I created this back rest and let's let's just start with this one this large unit because this is actually created uh it, it, this can be created two ways one small one and the, and the large one but this was created as one single piece and if i go to the uh, editor let's see how it's done it was a smart object part so it mm -hmm. was modeled 
quite the same way. The only thing, the, the first thing was the it was vertical. It is having this specific size, but it's simply because see I cannot change it because it was picked by one the of profile these itself. profiles. And the top profile is horizontal. I mean it's a straight line. It was not it is not curvy this way. I mean we can see some curve, but that's something else. I will tell you that. And uh, there is this one. It's the second one. Is the side view curve. And this is where I used the same way. I just, just designed this profile and used my drawing to track the, the, the original curve from the photograph. Mm -hmm. I could save it, but I didn't this time. And the same way I designed this kind of frontal view of this whole thing. And then at the end, I of course designed the material and I decided to either put at least a pillow effect. I have one pillow effect at the front and I have perhaps nothing at the, at the back, see? It's actually flat, but uh, because of the curve, it's, it's hard to see. But as you can see, you can combine uh, these effects together and not just, you know, use so one you can pillow have, effect. Oh, I see, so you can have the, the pillow and the tuft, so you can uh, <coughs> combine so as many things I as you I can blow it up and I can add tufting. So let, let's just see what are those three. The second is also a pillow. The difference, if I, if I move from this here and to this, see, this is having a custom area. And this custom area, is it's, it's affecting only this part. Mm -hmm, because that's the backrest part, right? So, so, so that was the time when I used uh, this. I see, I see. So I saw the original sense. photograph that it's, it's until the seat is connecting to it. It's just, you know, flat. And then it's having this fluffy mm -hmm. and uh, pillow effect. Just the way it's supposed to be. So. so I just used this. I actually, again, just used uh, the, the original profile that I designed here. And then uh, I just added a, a, a bigger depth in this case. Well, actually, this is the thickness. Uh, and let me just uh, further blow it. It will be 0.1 and you can see it. So this is how it affects only this area. Changing back to 0.05 tells you the difference. Okay. And it is further combined with something called the tufted effect. And it's actually nailing. This, 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 these three dots here are nailed into the uh, fabric of this mm -hmm. uh, whole thing. And again, it is having a custom area using the same custom area as before and having a specific radius, a specific depth. And actually, this is also some very important that you can change the shape of these things. I see. So it's like the intensity of the or, or the or the, pegs the, the which basic are whole. shape. Yeah. Mm -hmm. the, 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 the basic look look alike uh, if this is button like or something you can change this this way these are there for you readily available for use you can even you know rotate this if this is something specific and then then you can just uh, play around with these settings to find uh, the best position that you are about to mm -hmm. uh, create you can again pick uh, things from the drawing and then just use this uh, this whole thing uh, as one single piece save it and then combine it. Now I'm not saving it actually. I'm just skipping it. And then combine it with the other. With uh, the, with the example, seat this part. This one, I add the new one, I place it around, yes. and then. We I haven't talked about the legs yet, so. Yeah, the legs are, um, well, they are uh, created the same way, just as the same way as the, as the other unit was. It was, it was a loft. Mm -hmm. The only trick here is it, it's that it is having a, a specific oh, so it custom a curve profile. profile. It has a, it's a not depth. a vertical one. It's this uh, is the same curve I designed here. So I just picked it using this one. The Of course, the basic orientation was vertical, but I just picked the profile. And then here I did the same identical thing. I just created one leg section with a specific size and another one at the bottom with another specific size and mm -hmm. the software did the rest. The loft is a transforming tool. It will automatically solve a shape like this. Yes. I just need to set the beginning, the, the, the start and the curve or, or a breaking curve. Also where the, where the uh, reference point should be and that yeah. would position the, the profiles in <laughs> relation to that curve. Yeah, or actually, that. actually, this was created with, with, with three different cross sections, this one, and there is another one which is not visible now, and another one, but, but it's, it's actually enough to have only two. Yes. So this is how a complex object like this builds up using the same method, mm -hmm. creating the basic unit and then attach, adding more and more and more things. So we, I, we can clearly see there is one, two, three, 
four items building up this unit and then at the end it yeah. was saved as the Marshall chair. Uh, there's quite a few <coughs> questions piling up so if you don't mind we'll, okay, we'll talk about them, them too. Um, <coughs> is it possible to bulge the straight vertical faces of the seat part? The straight vertical faces of the seat part. Even like like uh, these, not only the top at the and the bottom, but the sides as well. Or you should instead <laughs> use the rounding off to... Well, either you use the rounding off uh, or uh, you can... And this is the part when, when you can see that if there is some option that you cannot change, there was no option for that in the in the um, object part, mm -hmm. the smart, small object, smart object part uh, library. So if you cannot find something like that, you can still use objects that you download. And that's that's why it's good that you don't, if, if you cannot, you don't have to model something mm -hmm. that, that, that ha you don't have tools for, but uh, the rest you can, you can easily do. But actually, this can be uh, created also by using uh, this, this kind of pillow effect with different radius. This will also affect the, the size. So if you use different rounding of it, you will get the same result. But by, by drawing this uh, curvature of this vertical part, you cannot make changes. I see, I understand. And next one is, I think about the effects, this, uh, the stuffing and, yeah. and the pegs. Uh, so you draw different surfaces that will inherit finished effects. That's, that's how it works. Yes, absolutely, so absolutely. And even uh, there is a version of this uh, unit. Uh, we have it in the install set. You can, you can find them, I mm -hmm. think you can just uh, search in the Design Center for Master Chair which has, uh, you know, kind of uh, petals or, or this kind of, you know... Oh, yes, this kind of bags or... bags inside. Yes. And those are, those are actually downloaded objects, uh, parts of originally downloaded objects and put there so you can freely combine these uh, with other things. Perfect. Here's another one. Uh, could a designer manufacture new bespoke furniture directly from their bespoke <coughs> furniture model? Uh, if this means the use of existing objects yes, in Archline, then that, that is possible. Absolutely. You can, you can imagine how you could use these things. If, you, if it's something that is kind of like in case of the, uh, the Chesterfield chair, which is coming with a specific seat, a specific back, backrest and a specific armrest. Uh, if you don't want or cannot model any of these parts, but you find an object which is mostly having these things, mm -hmm. all you need to do is just to clear it up until you find the core that you would like to use as a basic, uh, perhaps the armrest, perhaps uh, many of these, and then you can use this tool to combine them together. Perfect. The whole point here is that once you combine them, uh, once you combine them as a smart object assembly item, this here, and it that's where it all comes together. the same way as the objects behave. So you will be able to transform it around, move it around, and it's still keeping the complexity of this object so you won't in because the other way around would be to save this as an object if you save something as an object it's a very good tool but uh, it loses the the details you mm -hmm. won't be able to reach the leg anymore you won't be able to change the shape of the leg anymore but this way you keep the flexibility of the model and you keep the uh, the model itself as one whole unit as well that's perfect. And I understand that you have a couple of examples, <coughs> further examples to illustrate some more yeah. Arstein features. Yeah, let's because go with we, that. We, we are only scratching the surface here. Obviously, these are the, the most basic items you can use and combine to create something like that. But let's see a couple of further examples to see how you can design something more intricate. Let me first show you the target where we are going to. Uh, if you are about to model something that appears on the screen now, then uh, you will wonder how I can build up something like this in complexity. Mm -hmm. uh, this is a combination of objects downloaded from the 3D warehouse, for example, uh, the regular pillows, the uh, texture, and a combination of things that I have created using the, um, the same, ob same tools, the uh, smart object parts yes. and, and so on. So how to create something like, <coughs> like this. For this, I have another project which is containing several versions of, um, this bed. of a bed. And uh, it helps you understanding what's the, what's the trick behind, how, mm -hmm. how this whole thing works. And see- How it all comes together. <coughs> so yeah. let's see what do we have there on are, this as lane. You can see, <laughs> as you can clearly see, there are several versions and the units. So let me just first show you the units and how you can create something like, like this. This is actually a smart object part. And now you can start with a vertical <coughs> one. It, you just define the shape. 
you just design the you decide the orientation you design the rounding if there is any and then you go around and check those things the main shape the vertical shape the horizontal shape and so on you decide the material and then you decide whether you the have effects. some effect that did not we clearly have some pillow effect here and we clearly have some tough effect so this is the nail in effect so this is how you can do that now the only difference here the nail in has some different uh, parameters here that's and it's and it's actually using a reduced area that means it's not starting from the from the right from the edges it's measured 50 millimeters from the edges and then it affects the area mm -hmm. so you can kind of keep an offset from the edges good and <coughs> this way all the all the rest could uh, be modeled this was all, of course saved then I created a smaller version I created a simpler one version. with a different texture I think yes with a different texture and as you can see this is this is just a plate this is nothing fancy but this combined together with this one can create something oh, such complex the like this here this is actually the headboard one headboard with a clear I plate see. behind and, and six model parts six model modules around you can create a larger one a smaller one and you can save these as units that you mm -hmm. can readily use so <clears throat> just to clear this up how this works again this is very simple having a simple shape round offs vertical horizontal straight lines and the front of you and that's it and it's saved and that and you're cool with that so okay so this is how it, this was modeled and as you can see there are this this and this and this and this part these are these all are just the furniture <coughs> parts yeah these are these are simple uh, furniture parts but like the covers came from external sources right yeah those are so that's a very good example of how <coughs> to utilize external data yeah this was part of, an, of, of a larger object actually you can find uh, simple uh, textiles like like this as, as individual objects as well but many times you will just simply find them as as parts of beds or, or something like that and then you can with the tool of you know breaking it apart you can you can break it apart you can just select that single thing and save it as an object and then you can just simply rescale it and and use it with a with a different uh, value the same way you can um, you can download uh, pillows and you can download something like this like a, a spe mm -hmm. specific designer pillow or something like that and this is the, this is the same way created but this here is a lag it's a loft very simple just a straight small line and two cross sections this is a small smart object part it's very similar to what i've created just with different size and another another one this is perhaps the you know the mattress <laughs> and so on so this way you can combine something like this and until you keep them as single units and until you don't combine them as one object you will have to you know select them and, and not forgetting the rest but later you can combine them as one single object and you can save it into the library as I don't know uh, I don't know this um, bad bit 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 large uh, headrest head or headboard uh, the same one with different mm -hmm. color with different so multiple um, versions of options. the same same thing that's that's very handy yeah so basically what we have seen mm -hmm. is that we are using just a few features in the software but with the clever combination of those you can create something like that 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 applies to almost everything in Arch Lines. Yeah. you don't have to use many many <laughs> things to create one effect you just have to know how to how to put it all together and for that you just said a very good advice in the beginning is that you would have to look at something that you want to create and then in your head try to break it down to smaller bricks uh, which you would model first and then you combine them yeah. And and as you proceed, you will find <coughs> more and more effective ways to achieve the very same uh, results. And uh, I think uh, there is an, one another thing that, uh, based on my own experience, when I model something, I I try to avoid, is that when I see something, first sometimes I I, I approach it too complex. I see yes. see a complex thing, and I and I try you to jump find right into and, it, and I try to find the best solution to create that. And sometimes it takes more time than just you know use yeah. my already existing knowledge and then build it up and you know uh, create something already so uh, my advice if you see something and you have a short uh, you know time, time to, to create, to create it, that and then you already know that there is I don't know something with with uh, a cascade uh, I don't know strings or, or something like that and if you know that you could create it with for example with the loft with a with a 3D profile of it, for example, a, 
uh, even with a column or a beam or something like just 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 do it combine it and maybe later you will find a better solution yes but but just keep doing it just and keep then, modeling right and then yeah and then and then you will end up with, with beautiful uh, results perfect thank you very much <laughs> this was, this was quite, a, quite a handful of features to to process but i think if we see what the end result should be then we could be on the right track to model just this kind of things let's talk about what happens <coughs> next time and that is going to be about uh, terrain yeah, yeah this was uh, this is not in hungarian but <laughs> nevertheless terrain, terrain. Is, is the next thing what we are going to discuss and that is going to be all about using terrain files so creating yeah. three-dimensional terrain models from existing uh, data that you have yeah i mean that's 3d data that you talk yes. about and we will also uh, process uh, 2d uh, kind of, you know, just simple images and try to track them and that's right. build, literally build up a terrain. And that's just one well. part of the story because you have to know how to how to uh, handle that three-dimensional uh, digital terrain model, how to yeah. create plateaus, roads, and other zones within it. Yeah. How to modify. How it. to kind of paint areas of the that's terrain. Right. That's right. So that's what we are going to talk about next Wednesday at the same time. Hope yeah. to see you all there. Thank you very much for the questions. These are really yeah. uh, keeping the, the webinar more relevant. Again, thank you for your attention and see you next Wednesday. See bye you. bye. Goodbye.